It's one of nature's wonders, salmon schooling as part of their annual spawning run in Western Australia. And it's a site these men live for, for three months every year. They're the salmon fishers of Parry Beach. Well, most of the salmon travel deep because the big schools can't come in on the coast. So all we're getting is the small schools breaking off and feeding and returning to sea later on. And those big schools going past can be anything up to a couple of thousand tonne. They only hit in several places on the way up to Fremantle. Um, and so as far as sustainability goes, we're only just catching a very small portion of what goes past on the coast. Wild salmon is a beach net fishery. They also use jet boats, but on a day like this, not much has changed since the fishery began here with rowboats 70 years ago. It's the best option on a quiet day. If it's quiet and the sea's not too rough, you want a small shot, you don't want to disturb the fish too much, so you, you'll use your smallest boat and net you can. Um, it doesn't disturb the fish and you minimise the amount of weed you get in the net. Les Pinager has been fishing at Parry Beach since 1962, but in recent years, his well-drilled team has struggled to stay afloat. When his father Bill pioneered the fishery here in the 1940s, they could barely keep up with demand from canneries in nearby Albany. But those days are long gone. WA's salmon fishery has been on the verge of collapse. From a historical catch of up to 3,000 tonnes a year, it's slumped to less than 300 tonnes. Its main market now is for bait for the western rock lobster industry. The beach price for these fish is about $2. It's hard to believe these fish are worth only 50 cents a kilogram as cray bait, but filleted and sold as a table fish, they're worth up to 40 times more. The Parry Beach crew is building a local market for salmon, selling a growing percentage of their catch for human consumption. And so it's a humane dispatch? Oh, by far the quickest and most humane way, but it's also a way of um, getting the best out of the fish. Quality's better when there's fight because they're going to just bled. And I noticed like, the bleeding, how important is that with salmon? Yeah, you've got to get the blood out of them. They're better off with the blood out, the red meat. And um, it improves, once again, it improves the quality of the fish going into a nice slurry here. At Parry Beach, the fishing may be old school, but they've embraced social media for marketing their catch. Salmon caught fresh fish this morning. Keep watching Facebook for when and where to pick up today. That's what we pride ourselves on, is uh, fresh, fresh uh, Australian salmon. Uh, social media has been really important for us because it's the best way to get it to the public, let them know that the, the fish were caught and we can um, get the fish to them as fresh as possible. Harry Beach crew may be slowly developing a market, but the truth is, Australian salmon has an image problem. Its red flesh and strong flavour have been a hard sell in WA, in a market spoiled for choice with premium white-fleshed species such as pink snapper, coral trout and dewfish. Albany-based fishmonger Adam Sumalidis has been processing the Parry Beach catch. Why it's had a bad rep? Uh... Probably because it's always been treated for bait and never been treated like this. That's probably why I, I think. Well, when the uh, fish comes in like this, you've got a lot of shelf life. You know, you can uh, keep it for a week and you can do a lot of things with it too. You know? And so, how does salmon compare with other species, you know, for the yield that you get? They compare with all the other species. They're around about 35% what you get. There. There's a lot of red blood in it, but uh, the, the heads can be sold, the roe can be sold, so you value add with that, so, you know, it's good. At Clancy's Seafood Pub in Dunsborough in the southwest of WA, salmon is a seasonal staple. Chef Jason Taylor rates it highly, but he says the supply chain is crucial. 
fishermen leave it on the rock for four hours and throw it in the back of the ute and then go home and cook and go, why does it taste like crap? So yeah, there is a little bit of work and extra preparation to get it, get it there, but people, people love it um, and they keep coming back for more. Yeah, and it's cheap. Uh, fits with the family budget as well, so you know, it's good for families to come out, give it a good cheap feed of fish and chips. Salmon skewers, um, chilli, garlic and sesame oil, and they're on our platter for ones and twos. Curtin University and WA's Fishing Industry Council have identified Australian salmon as one of a dozen low-value species that could be exploited to get more people enjoying the health benefits of eating fish. I think education is really important, so Australian salmon is one of the fish we put into our school's education program that we're just starting. And yeah, I think educating the chefs, educating the children, educating the consumers, educating the retailers, is very important. As uh, ethnic Australians, we know that it's one of the, an un untapped resource, really, you know. And eating like this, you, you couldn't get better fish when it's fresh, amazing. Um, why, why do you think people do turn their noses up at it? Oh, I think uh, because it's, it's got flavour. Some people could say that this fish is, is definitely, it's an oily fish, there's a lot of omega-3s in it, there's a lot of positives, but it's, got, it's quite strong. But see, for me, that strong means flavour. Peter Manifest is a chef educator and provador, and he's on a mission to get more salmon on restaurant menus. He says it's one of the most versatile fish in the ocean, from fish and chips to fish salads. It's an affordable, healthy and flavoursome option. So what are you making here? Well, just a little fish salad, you know, um, uh, being Greek, you know, you get bored up on, on you know, I suppose cold fish. Um, you know, the, the Italians love it as well. And this is a dynamic new product that's coming, that's coming you know, and, and I think I suppose for me, uh, you know, what great resource for chefs to be able to, to ring up and get a tub of, you know, already properly, you know, uh, cooked fish, uh, Australian salmon, uh, rather than tin tuna. Tuna is one of the strongest fish in the ocean. So if we, how can we be saying that this is a strong fish if people don't, they, they eat canned tuna, this is exactly the same. Probably even better because it's caught locally and, and it's going to be sustainable once we, we get a certification, you know. But amazing, you know, like, I'll get you to try it, yeah. you know. For me, this is what I got brought up on. Mm. I want fish that's got flavour now. I want, and I want chefs to know how to cook fish with flavour, you know, and not be scared of them and not be scared to put them on their menus. This is innovation, as far as I'm concerned, and if chefs um, are holding back from not putting this because they're scared of what, what the punter's going to think, it's all training and that's what we've got to do. We need to teach the people how to eat it, how to cook it, what to do, how to handle it, and then, you know, the world's your oyster, you know, or the, the salmon's your oyster. The vast majority of WA salmon still gets cut up and boxed for lobster bait. Most of the 24 licence holders in the fishery have stopped fishing, but they're now working together to revive the industry. Alan Miles is a veteran fisher and processor. He says the industry needs to be guaranteed a catch at its historic average to find new, more lucrative markets. We see that salmon is probably predominantly a manufacturing type fish in as much as it's great for patties, it's great for mornays, it's great for curries, all those sort of things. Whereas a lot of people shy away from it as an actual table fish. And to get that sort of processing done, unfortunately we have to move offshore because of the cost. Mr Miles says the 24 licence holders want 100 tonnes of quota each to give their licences value and to help attract investment. Quota is the ultimate. Um, it's got a downside in, in as much as there's pressure on the fisherman to report his catch all the time and there's pressure on the department to police that. But outside of that, being allocated a quota to my individual licence of one thing or another is sort of like giving you the key to the farm, you know, sort of thing. You have a right to control that and do what you like with it. There's currently no catch limit on Western Australian salmon uh, in terms of commercial catch. So despite the fact that for the last couple of years the, the commercial salmon fishers have only been taking sort of 75 to 300 tonnes, there's nothing to stop them going out and catching 1,000 tonnes this year if they wanted to. Tim Nicholas is the manager of fisheries for WA's southwest bioregion. 
He says the salmon stock migrates from as far away as Bass Strait for the annual autumn spawning season. A recent assessment found the fishery was in good health, but any return to historical catch levels would require more research. The age structure of the stock is looking very healthy. So that's a fantastic thing. You know, we don't have concerns for the state of the stock right now, certainly not saying anything along those lines. But what we are saying is that if you start changing uh, the level of fishing pressure that is on that stock, then we need to watch it very closely to make sure we understand what the impacts are on the stock. Fisheries WA has advised the salmon licence holders to negotiate with the Recreational Fishing Lobby as part of its submission for a guaranteed quota. But Recfish West, which represents the state's 800,000 anglers, will take some convincing. Salmon, it's an amazing resource. It's, it's one of the world's best sports fisheries that we have here on the doorstep of Perth and along the south coast and in the southwest. And it's on some of the world's most beautiful beaches simply taking these magnificent animals out of the environment, running them through a bandsaw and stuffing them into a bait box to put into a rock lobster pot is just not acceptable use of this important resource. Wreckfish West's Andrew Rowland says the commercial catch should be for food, but he's worried about the impact of a tenfold increase on catch levels of the last five years. So this is not about sustainability. Sustainability for us is the starting line, not the finishing line. So what we know is we need to leave the stock in the water to provide from a, a, a biologically sustainable perspective. That's a given. But what we really need to understand is how much of the biomass needs to be left in the water to provide a good opportunity for people in small boats or off the shore with one hook on a fishing line, um, you know, relatively low efficient fishing methods as opposed to, to, to haul nets. This vision, captured at a stand-up paddleboard school in the Swan River last year, went viral and shows just how abundant the species is. Commercial fishers say they're confident the science will support a bigger catch. Anecdotally, no one's been catching them, so they're all out there somewhere. Our low catch years, all of those fish are bred. And I think we saw that last year with the, uh, the number of fish that were in Coburn Sound and up the coast and one thing and another. The beach sand fishery exploits the salmon's annual spawning migration, so it's seasonal, lasting eight to 12 weeks. But there are moves now to shift some of the catching effort offshore to guarantee a year-round supply. One of the problems of marketing salmon is um, the availability. They're in the water, but you can't catch them traditionally on the beaches all year round. So if you could purseen them, boats could, you know, local boats could go to where they are, catch them, um, that would utilise the, the species more and make them more available. Tony Westerberg is one of the last processors left in Albany and already catches sardines and other species with a Perth Seine vessel. He says there's been interest from China and Thailand for WA salmon, but they need volume and continuity of supply. His idea of using some of the proposed quota for a Perth Seine fishery is supported by Wreckfish West. Well, we believe moving some of the catch offshore would be a good outcome and in the past we've supported trials um, up to 50 tonnes to push uh, those fishing catch catches offshore because we do have conflict uh, on the beaches. Um, we've got some of the world's most beautiful beaches and people run around chasing the schools of salmon when they turn up in autumn and it's really important um, that they can get out there and do that and often there's conflict on the beaches when there is commercial fishing operations happening at those same places at the same time. But there are fears that purse seining could have an impact on the salmon's natural migratory pattern. It's been trialled in South Australia unsuccessfully um, and the years that the purse seiners were working in South Australia, they were taking our juvenile fish before they were mature. So, in, uh, the, you know, the, the catch was around 1,000, 1,500 tonnes, which may well have been 3,000 tonnes of adult fish. Um, and it wasn't successful, they gave it away. Les Pinager and his crew have kept faith in the salmon industry as much for the lifestyle as anything else. They're all shareholders in the business and their families are part of the picture. Is it a bit hard to get the kids off to school on an exciting morning Absolutely. like this? Absolutely. They don't want to go to school. They want to have the day off. <laughs>
For three months a year, there's no television and they live in fishing shacks long past their heyday. They say it's a lifestyle money can't buy. Oh, we're just sticking at it. We've just got hope that something good will come out of it and we want to do it for our kids and the history of it and we want, it, we want the tradition to live on and hopefully people will see it and we'll be rewarded in a way. The monetary reward may not match the generous hauls of fish they catch, but the Parry Beach crew believe they have a sustainable fishery and they deserve some security. I mean, farmers are all the time getting assistance with drought, with floods, all those type of things they get assistance. Fishermen get nothing. All we're asking for is to take what we've traditionally taken for the last 70 years that is obviously sustainable because you see those fish still swimming past today that more than we need. <laughs>